Hello, and welcome to Holistic Lifestyle Tips, Getting Real About the Woo Woo. I'm Becky Russell, owner of wellness company Hope Essential, and I am an essential oil educator and a holistic lifestyle educator. I just love to teach. And I also feel compelled to share my journey of over 25 years of holistic living because of how it's just been so amazing for me. Um, in my family, uh, as women near the age of 40, they're typically diagnosed with, uh, many are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. And when I was 35, I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic and I had to make a choice. Do I follow the traditional path that they did where I saw they did not age with a quality of life, uh, in my humble opinion, um, or do I try something different? So I decided to try something different. And it's worked for me, I feel, because at 63, I am not on any diabetes medications and not even uh, considered pre-diabetic. So um, I just wanna share what's worked for me and hopefully it'll help you. And am I totally free of any kind of, uh, you know, medical issues? No, I have, I have them, but I choose to approach them holistically first and then the other path. And so I just want to share what I know to help others age with a quality of life. And to me, that's the holistic way of treating, going to the um, root of the issue, not treating symptoms and treating the entire body, mind, body, and soul. And so I came up with this idea of weekly videos where I am either talking about an issue I want to explore more, share with you, or I'm interviewing somebody that is an expert in their field. And uh, so to, it usually involves either physical wellness, spiritual wellness, or emotional wellness, or one, two, or all three together. So tonight we have uh, a very special guest. I'm so excited to introduce you to um, Laura Marie Blankenship. And she is the founder of Lamb Fine Arts and is an artist and creative guide. And I am just so excited, Laura, to have you here. I am in awe of people that can draw, paint, do anything like that because I can't even do a stick figure. So I'm, I'm just so, I'm not gonna say jealous because I have my own talents, but, uh, Art is not one of them. So, so excited to uh, have you here and learn more about you. So um, I mentioned that we talk about physical, spiritual, emotional wellness. Which category do you think what you do, where does that fit? Physical, emotional, spiritual. Um, I guess in my view, and I'm already like wanting to respond to something you're saying, in my view, they're all connected, right? So we can like slice through them and say like, we're gonna um, categorize them in that way. And what's coming up for me is tapping into our innate creative ability, whether that is drawing a stick figure or a painting or is creating a business or a life, getting creative about your lifestyle choices and how you yourself, not how society tells us to address something, but how you're like, okay, I want, I want to see all my options. What are all the options available for me? That takes creativity, right? And so I think that tapping into your own creativity, um, you can address issues in terms of spiritual, um, mental, and physical wellness. And also when people are expressing the emotions that, sure that um, can be thought of as mental, but they live in the body, um, that also affects your physical health. Um, yes, so I, I think that being able to express yourself, express emotions, um, is a mental health issue for sure. Um, I know that I personally, there were times in my life when I felt extremely restricted and I was not, it felt unsafe to express myself physically um, in terms of like relationships or uh, judgment of others. My perception was that I wouldn't be like cared for or whatever if I was actually expressing my authentic self. Um, so that was a huge mental health issue. Um, but that can also lead to physical health stuff as well. Um, yeah, it's, it's so it's literally all connected. And for and for for me, I think some people are uncomfortable with the word spirituality, and I use it because for me, I I see myself as my physical body is part of my spirituality. Like I don't actually see them as separate. So when I'm taking care of my physical self, I'm taking care of my emotional and mental needs because um, your beliefs 
are connected to your emotions, you know, um, then I'm taking care of spirit because spirit lives in my body. Yeah. And holistic really means the entire body, mind, body, and soul. Yeah. Totally. So to, so you're to help people better grasp it, then we break it into those categories. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Because I'm well, trying to demystify what holistic means for people. You know? I love that mission. Yeah. When you said, um, what is it? Demystifying the woo woo? Yeah. <laughs> Getting yeah. real about the woo woo. Getting real about the woo woo. Yeah, that's super cool. <laughs> I love that. I have a partner who is um, very um, analytically minded and extremely smart. Um, and sometimes our conversations will get to a point where I can no longer engage with him on the level of logic. Um, and I feel, and sometimes I, I'm concerned that my language becomes woo-woo. So I does, it does help to kind of anchor this in some people in this culture. I live in um, North America. I'm part of the more dominant Western culture where um, there's a lot of, we, I learned as a child, in order for something to be true, it must be proven by science. And this is how all of that works. Um, so it can, the things that we actually already know in our bodies to be true we often find ourselves looking for scientific evidence and information to justify that and back that up. So sometimes I, I find that talking about things with a scientific language can almost serve as a bridge to people who, this actually happened in a conversation we were having the other day about eating right. Um, and I think I just know my body feels really good when I'm um, taking the time and attention to notice what I'm putting into it and intentionally making choices. Um, but I, that didn't work for him. Like I needed to explain about science and how literally every cell of my body is made up of what I'm putting in. So, um, uh, and, and we and put it on that. That's interesting because I'm married to that kind of person as well. So, uh, luckily we, we just, um, it's been 38 years. So, uh, luckily we, we just accept each other as we are. And it's awesome. I don't have to apologize for being woo woo. Now that didn't start until um, probably my, well, when I got that diagnosis because I had to seek help outside of traditional medicine. So that was my path. So up till that point, I was always different for other reasons, <laughs> but uh -huh. that sort of put me on another path that even made me stand out a little more in that I'm not doing, I'm not judging anyone with their, for their choices but I am free to choose something else and other people need to know there are those choices out there. So yeah. how do you, how did you get into, um, you know, being an artist and creative guy that just really intrigues me. Sure. Well, um, how I get into art, I was an only child. And so I spent a lot of time alone and art was my own way of like processing things and how like friends, to, a lot of friends to talk to all the time. I'm grateful for some lifelong friends I have now. Um, you know, and I have my parents who are wonderful humans, but I spent a lot of time alone, um, a lot of time drawing and a lot of time working with my emotions. And then later it became something that really supported me through my absolute hardest of times, my um, least healthy of times, at some, some really darker places um, in my late teens and early 20s. So, and art was there through all of it. I actually didn't have to be making healthy choices to be utilizing um, this medium to express myself in. And I, it enabled me in the future to make healthy choices, but it was always there. And it's kind of been this um, blueprint and even souvenir. I, it's like the tapestry of my life and I can like look through some like really, really dark self-portraits. And I mean, and poetry too. I used to write a lot of poetry and I write a lot. So that's like how it always showed up for me. Um, yeah. And so now I, I, how I talk about what I do is I say that I utilize art to help people get in touch with their emotions and express their emotions. So that might look like um, people buying art from me, they're commissioning a piece or buying something I've already done. Um, I used to go to like a lot of live music shows. That's most of the work behind me. And I would paint while the musicians play. So I'm like literally channeling that energy and all of their emotions that comes from oh their gosh. music into the canvas, right? So that's, I have a lot of experience doing that, but now, so I still sell, I sell my work. And also um, people come to me and like, well, do you do classes? 
Yes, I do. Um, I don't call it a class as much as a session. Um, if you're, I think people, no matter if they're experiencing like a lot of joy and vibrancy in their life, or maybe they're going through a bit of a darker time or just a transition, um, I think art can be a really helpful way to express emotion and just get in touch with what's going on. And we can say things in images or with just the movement of our body, like while we're painting it, like we might go really big, right? There might be a lot to say, there might be a lot to throw on the canvas. Um, so that process can help us process and move through emotions that we may not have the vocabulary for now or ever. And we can work on putting some vocabulary to it afterwards when it's done. Um, so that's one thing I do. And also helping people who are like, yeah, maybe I'm not like, not wanting to move this sad stuff through. I just want to learn how to paint, right? And um, I was talking to a woman yesterday and she really wants to express her joy. And so I can teach people tools. I do teach people tools, how to use like, the elements of art, the principles of design, how to use that to make a painting that actually expresses what they're going for. So we talk a lot about intention and also what feels right and feels good because we have this emotional connection to different colors. You know, when you talk to people, everybody has a different color. And like, yep. I kind of start to see people in colors sometimes. Not, I'm not saying that I necessarily have um, vision with like seeing people's auras around them. I've only had that happen a couple times, um, <laughs> but you know, I just start to associate different people. I'm like, oh, they wear red all the time and they're really fiery, you know, which is kind of a stereotype. And I think there is a lot to be said for um, traditional color theory and art, how we utilize that to express emotion or how colors bounce off of each other. I was also a psychology major, so we talk a lot about, you can put, um, you can put like a neutral gray that has just like, it's totally neutral, like totally just black and white. Okay, 100% black and white. And then you can put it next to a color that's like a little orange and blue and orange are opposites. So this neutral gray over here starts to actually look a little blue. It starts to look cool. But then you take the orange away and it goes to looking totally neutral again. So this is like optical illusion-y stuff that happens, totally science-based. It's in my sensation and perception book. I went to William & Mary, y'all. This isn't, this is real. This is not just woo-woo. Okay, <laughs> so I know a lot about both like the science and structural foundations of it. My bachelor's is in science and psychology. And then I also have a lot of experiential embodied knowledge of what it feels like to move emotions through extremely difficult and joyous times and how to express what I want to express. I love that. And I think one of the things I know when my uh, daughter was in middle school, I think, uh, or maybe high school, I can't remember, it's been so long, but um, I was an at-home mom, so I was able to do a lot of the chaperoning and coaching things and such, and she was uh, in a group that was, it was a um, a cool thing called Odyssey of the Mind, and it was all about creativity, and I was so, so impressed with this program, and what it sort of brought home to me is we are born creative creatures. I mean, we, there's no fear in drawing with a crayon when you're little and you're just joyful you're, or mad or whatever. You're, you're real and it's on the page. There's no judgment. But then you get into school and you're in art class and the person next to you is this gifted innately wonderful person that can draw and their tree looks like a tree and it's beautiful. And I'm over here with my sticks that look, they're sad. They don't even resemble, you know, I I'm doing my hardest. I'm doing my best and it's not coming out like hers. So you're automatically, you know, sort of put in that judged kind of thing. And you just say, I don't, I can't draw. I don't, I'm not creative that way. And what yeah. this program taught me was how it, it almost gets beaten out of you, not literally, but figuratively gets beaten out of you, that, cre that natural creativity and that love of creating. And I thought that is so sad, but it is true, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really glad you shared that. A couple of things are coming up around that for me. Um, I think a lot of people who come to me um, and a lot of people who buy my work and also who um, want to 
take a session with me, there's some overlap there. And it seems to be there's it's people who tend to really value creativity and maybe they have done something really creative in their lives, but um, visual 2D art as a modality, as a medium, isn't something that they think they're very gifted at, but they want to get better. And so there's a, a little bit of this willingness. They've been enough of an explorer and they've been on enough odysseys to, to know that like it's okay to be a little bad at something and they want to get better. Um, and they, and I think there's enough of that belief that like it's possible. Um, and also in talking about your, well, just everyone's experience in public school, right? So yeah, I have a lot of stuff myself about being second best or second rate. Cause what I do the, the, the most fun and beautiful for me is like totally messy, like wild. So I don't know how well this is going to show up for people in the background, but like messy, wild stuff. I can draw realism. Um, you can go to my website, look at it, you know. Uh, and what brings me the most joy is the, the fun and the mess. And I, and I was so jealous in sixth grade when, um, I wonder if Timmy McGarry will ever see this, when he was a vote, when he was voted, like, um, I went to a private school and we ended elementary school at sixth grade, went to uh, Catholic school. But yeah, Timmy McGarry was voted um, best artist or most likely to be an artist. And I was like, ah, whatever, you know. <laughs> um, but I always... I went back and looked at my yearbook recently and I got complimented on always having the most creative hairstyle. So I think being creative, what I want to underline here, doesn't have to do just with being able to do it like the book. In fact, I, there's something to be really said for, I'm not saying Timmy McGarry wasn't an artist. He was amazing. And there's something to be said for skill and really honing it. And I've spent a lot of time honing my realism so that I understand the physiology of the body and I can paint somebody really fast and there's a reason it looks like this. And I think that there's a lot to be said for doing it the weird way, doing it the way that's out of the box. Cause what is creativity if not a little out of the box, right? Like you're choosing not to follow the conventional um, ways that other people in your family have dealt with the diabetes that runs in your family. Like that's out of the box. So I just think there's something to be said for that. I have taught art in the public school system somewhat. And I really try to encourage that because we spend, a, especially in elementary school, it's not look at this face, you know, and draw what you see. Like, do you see the darkness of the eye? Do you see the tip of the nose? Do you see how this side of my nose is lighter than the darkness over here? It's the face has this proportion. And do you know that the tops of the ears come to the top or to come to the eye line and like the bottoms of the ears come to the mouth. And like, I'm not saying that's not useful. And um, it's my wish to really inspire a lot more thinking outside of the box. Like, ooh, what could you do based off of that? Oh, you made a mistake there. What could you do with that? What could you turn it into? And I know a lot of amazing art teachers who do focus on that as well. Um, so just to say, that's my feeling. And so stick figures, I know so many people, when they look at my art, that's what they say. They're like, well, I only know how to do stick figures. So that's so amazing. But if you're willing to try and risk being bad, which I think is a myth, I could teach anyone how to make something beautiful because what's beautiful is what comes from your soul and your authenticity, not does it look like the teachers. And so that's just something we need to unlearn in Western culture, in the dominant culture in the world, right? It's not just in the West anymore in general. I love that. I love that positive mm -hmm. message. I, I, it does need to be spread more and more. Um, so who do you feel could benefit the most from what you do? Yeah. Um, well, I run a program, so people who want to express themselves, and it doesn't have to be just with um, my one-on-one -on -one sessions via Zoom or in person at my ginormous um, open-air studio at the William Oh, wow. King. <laughs> I share this with another um, artist. Her name's Holly, and she's amazing. And so we share, there's classroom space over there that's very um, open air, and I have a garage door here that I open when it's nice outside. So we get a lot of air flowing if this is launched while COVID is still a thing. Um, so I do it in person or over Zoom. So that's going to be more people who are interested in um, more conventional art like painting or drawing or even like I work a little bit with clay. I'm not an expert in clay, but I work with it to deal with emotions. It's fun. Um, so it's going to be people who want to know those skills to express themselves. Um, and I think also just creative in general who may not actually want to focus on their 2D skills, but they have been creatively blocked 
or they feel there's some reason that they're actually not working on that thing that they want to work on. So another artist who's local, her name is Jocelyn Matthews out of Johnson City. She's amazing. Um, I reached out to her last summer and was like, I really want to create something where we help people create whatever it is that they want. Like, um, so it's, we're not teaching writing and we're not teaching playing an instrument. But like I have a dear friend who really wants to write her novel, but she never makes time for it. Um, and I have some musician friends who want to learn a new instrument, but they never make time for it. And so it's like, okay, why not? So we created an eight-week course that also includes some upfront one-on-one -on -one coaching to help people understand what their creative goals are and how to move past any blocks. Because usually it's not just that you don't have enough time. There's a belief connected to some emotion for you, probably an old wound, um, that has to do with why you're not making the time. Do you believe you won't be good enough? Um, was it actually like a pretty rough experience you had in an art class or is it that you think you have to make your income from this traditional way and you actually want to learn how to use writing to make an income? So, or maybe it's just, I just really want to learn to play the drums and it to be fun, but like I'm a, I'm a people pleaser and I'm afraid I'm going to piss off my neighbors, you know? Um, so it could be a number. I'm just recently started playing the drums. So that's why that was okay. really fresh to me. <laughs> by neighbors but they haven't said anything yet that's funny. so yeah, how can people find you find. yeah um, my website is lambfineart.com lamb like <laughs> um no that is not my last name it's my initials so it's laura um marie um gosh what's b blankenship <laughs> i'm not gonna spell that one um but that's my full name but so Lamb is my initials, lambfineart.com. My email is lambfineart at gmail.com. And you can schedule an appointment with me at that website. You can schedule a little call if you want to chat with me more about what I offer. And you're like, would this really help me? And we can talk about what's actually real for you, if it would. I don't know, but we'll figure it out together. Okay, yeah. awesome. Oh, you, can, and you can see my portfolio and all my works for sale there, too. Sorry. Okay. And then after this is posted, then you can go in the comments and, and put all that in there so it'll make it real easy for them to find you. And then yeah, I yeah. always like to end the uh, video with a fun question. Uh, where is your happy place? Oh, yeah. Um, well, it's just 100%. I got a couple, but if I ask quick one. Um, you know, of course, painting, but 100%, it's actually before that, it's being outside in nature. And I've hiked the lower 1,000 miles of the Appalachian Trail. I'm going solo, um, mostly solo. And I'm going back for more this summer. Um, so just alone in nature, hiking, singing to myself. Um, yeah, it's just the most amazing experience and meeting the most amazing people. And just feeling really, like, self-sufficient and self-reliant and meeting all of my fears of being a solo woman out there. It feels really good. Awesome. And Tennessee, you can't find a more beautiful place to do that that's right and actually um i was living in tennessee last year and i moved i moved so i know it's a little confusing but just to clarify now my studio is currently located at the william king in abingdon virginia so i'm on the creeper trail every day actually or the ap out here okay okay great well this has been so fun and i i am just so like i said uh i love hearing about from people who are creative and how they help other people unblock that. And um, I just I just think it is something a lot of people aren't aware of that, that this is a choice. There are people like you out there that can help them get unblocked or help them find that joy in something that they may have just put aside out of, uh, usually it's fear when we don't want to <laughs> tackle something new, it's there's that fear. So um, yeah, I just enjoy this about so life. much. I could talk to you for hours. It's just really cool. So, but we, we have to sort of end it here, but thank you so much for joining me. And I, I intend to ask you to come back and um, just wanted to let the people know too, that if you want to see any other previous uh, videos, they're on my website, hopeessential.com. And then also uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Hope Essential LLC. And, uh, just keep looking every Wednesday we do this. So till next time, choose you, choose natural, choose now. Bye.